Hello, welcome to this session on getting started with Rook, how to install a, a quick cluster and start testing. My name is Travis Nielsen. I'm one of the Rook maintainers and I work for Red Hat. All right, so basically in this demo, we're going to go through three steps. We're going to start a Kubernetes cluster just with Minikube with virtual disks just to get us going. This isn't production grade cluster by any means, but it gets us going for testing. And then we're going to create the, all the Rook resources that we need to start Ceph in this cluster. And then the third step, we're going to go ahead and create a sample application or two that shows how these, how to create volumes, show how you can create the storage. All right, now I've dropped into the console where we're going to start Minikube first. Now, just to make this demo a little more streamlined, I've already downloaded Minikube and I've already started it. A couple of arguments to point out though. So I asked Minikube for three extra disks to be attached. Uh, this is necessary so Rook can have storage to consume um, in the VM. And then, of course, I have to tell it which driver to use, which I've used HyperKit. So overall, Minikube took less than two minutes to start on my laptop, and it's ready to go. So if I say kubectl get node, we should see that, yep, the node is running. Great. So let me drop into another console here, and we'll go ahead and create the needed resources. Now, I do have an alias here to make these uh, commands a bit quicker, but I'm going to go ahead and create them. All right, the first resource I need to create is the CRDs. These are the custom types for Rook. And then I need to create the security information, RBAC, roles, service accounts, and things. And then finally, we need to create the operator deployment for Rook. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this. We'll see a whole bunch of resources being created, um, mostly around the CRDs and the, uh, and the RBAC. And then the final one we see created was uh, the Rook operator. Uh, this is where the, the brains of the Rook management are running. Now if I go ahead and look in the Rook namespace, we should see the operator running already. I've already pulled the, the Rook image locally, so it would be faster as well. Okay, now that the operator is running, we need to go ahead and tell Rook how we want to configure the Ceph cluster. Okay, this is done by creating the cluster CR. So I'm going to go ahead and create that at this point. So cluster. So in the example folder, we have all sorts of um, example settings that you can use. And anytime you see a manifest that has test in the name, so if I look for these, anything that ends in test.yaml is going to be specifically for running in a single node or in Minikube. And we use this during development all the time. So look for these if you're in a test cluster. So the first thing I want to create is this cluster test.yaml. And basically this is going to create Rook in a configuration that is for a single node. Now we're going to watch uh, what's happening and just so you see the alias there, here's how I'm going to watch it just to get the pods every second and see what happens. Now we see a few containers being created, a few pods. So we have this, some CSI driver containers being created and we have uh, some Ceph containers and pods being created. First there is a mon pod, that's where the Ceph um, metadata is stored. That's really the brains of the Ceph cluster. We have a manager now being created, uh, so where Ceph collects metrics and, and has um, some other central information. And then pretty soon we're going to see some OSDs being created. Now the OSDs are daemons that start one per device. So since we told uh, Kubernetes and Minikube to start and attach three devices, uh, we're going to see three OSDs being created. But first we see that there's this OSD prepare job that's running. It's basically analyzing what disks are available on Minikube. And that's going to take uh, just a few more seconds here and it will be done. And then it will tell the operator, oh, I found three devices. I provisioned them. Now you can start the daemons on each of those individual devices. So we do see that we have OSD0, OSD1, and OSD2 created on the cluster. And this forms our basic Ceph cluster. We have everything we need to, to create storage and consume the, store, the Ceph storage. Before I go ahead and show how to consume the storage though, so right now the storage is only available for read write once volumes uh, with RBD, Ceph RBD. 
Okay, if we want to use sh um, shared file system with CFFS, or if we want to use an S3 endpoint with object storage, there's an extra step for those two. I'll just show how quick it is to install those. So for the shared file system, I'm gonna say, oh, create me a file system, and with the test suffix for Minikube. Okay, so that will tell the operator to create it. And at the same time, I'm gonna create it, oh, please create an object store with the test suffix for Minikube. Okay, and now these the operators configure them, and they take a few seconds. And if I look at what pods are running, so when they're done being configured, we see two MDS pods. Uh, those are pods that manage the Ceph file system for the shared storage. So those are ready. And in a few more seconds, we should see an RGW pod started, which will be for the object store with the S3 endpoint. Okay, and finally here we see the RGW pod is started and it's ready to serve the S3 endpoint. So again, now at this point we have the ability to create read-write-once volumes. We have we can create read-write-many volumes with the file system and we can create an S3 client that consumes from a, a bucket in the object store. All right, so let's create a sim sample application for uh, the read-write-once first. So if we go into the RBD, CSI slash RBD folder of the examples. This is where uh, we have a few sample files. And the first thing we have to do is create a storage class. Now, of course, in Minikube, we're going to use the one with the test suffix. So create the storage class, storage class test, create that. Now that's going to create a Ceph pool with replica one and a storage class. So now if I get the storage classes in the cluster, we see this new storage class for block storage, which we'll generally use for read write once applications. Now to go ahead and create an application that consumes that storage, we have to create its PVC and its pod. So in, in this folder, we have both of those files. So I'm gonna say create the pvc.yaml and we're going to create the a pod.yaml which consumes that PVC. Okay, so now that I've created the storage class and the PVC and the pod that consumes that PVC, we will see this volume created. All right, so if I do a get pod in the default namespace, it's creating my demo pod. And I didn't uh, pull that image in advance. So while that's loading, I'm gonna go ahead and go create a shared file system uh, PVC. Okay, so oops. If I go up to the CephFS folder, now we have similar examples in this folder where I need to create a um, a file system. Okay, for the file system, I actually don't need to create the test YAML uh, just because of how the file system set up. It already knows that we're in Minikube because I create a file system dash test YAML. All right, so if I create its storage class, now we get the storage class. We'll see the CephFS storage class created. And now, again, I can create the PVC and I can create the sample pod. All right, and now we've got a shared file system, PVC and pod created. Now, if I get the pods in the default namespace, we see that the read write once volume was created and attached to that pod. And then we also see that the shared file system pod is creating now. And again, that's just gonna take a minute to start. And if I refresh in a bit, it's going to be running. Oh, it's already running at, at this point. Okay, so we've created our sample applications for both types of, of volumes, read write once and read write many. In another demo, we'll show you how to create an OBC to consume a bucket and object storage. All right, hope you find, found this useful. We'll see you in another video. Thanks, bye.